Friends, Brian here from Middle Age Mind and Muscle, and I want to talk about a question I've been asked a few times. Uh, one of the times is from my good friend Phil from the Gold Coast in Australia. My opinion on Mike Menser and heavy duty training. So to answer this, I have to go back and give you my history, my history as a natural lifter before I took the plunge and went to the dark side with my training. So the first Exposure to bodybuilding I ever had. I have I had an older brother. He was 10 years older than me He was into bodybuilding a little bit. He was a track athlete and he had a book uh, Called high intensity bodybuilding from Ellington Darden. So it covered heavy duty the Arthur Jones principles uh, Sergio Levo was in the book Tom Platts Mike Menser Scott Wilson. There's a name from the past uh, And they talked about upping the intensity and doing less sets. This was my first exposure to it I, I didn't have the money to buy magazines at the time and so that always stuck with me. Then something else happened that I haven't talked to you guys about. And there's another guy that really has to uh, get a lot of credit. I'm going to say 87, maybe 88. A friend of mine who I trained with, he was fortunate enough. He also, uh, his family had some money. He had a decent Olympic setup downstairs in his basement, a little home gym. And uh, he and his family were kind enough to let me train there often. And uh, we became training partners, good friends, and he was quite strong naturally too as teenagers. Like we just never thought about taking steroids because we saw results year after year with our training. So, uh, but in the back of a muscle, I think it was Muscle Mag International, might have been Muscle and Fitness, but I think it was Muscle Mag International. There was this little ad, be natural, get huge. The Brutally Huge Method by Bill Davis. Who the hell is Bill Davis? What What is this? So he ordered it and he got this rough, uh, it was like a VHS and he got a whole bunch of like these booklets uh, full of spilling mistakes, which was kind of cool because it was like, it gave it character by this guy, Bill Davis. And, and he was like, he was very much against steroids and his principles were kind of like heavy duty, but from a natural perspective where he was like, the key is under training, do less sets, warm up, do less sets. And just really, really, really uh, push yourself hard. And then get the hell out of the gym and rest and recover. Because one of the things between geared training, where you're taking gear, and natural training is when you're natural, you don't have an endless supply of hormones in your body. You're like a bank account, man. You can only go to the bank so many times every day and make withdrawals before it's like, oh, no, overdraft. You're going to get nailed with a fee here. So... Uh, also, with the Bill Davis method, too, he was really big on drop sets, if I remember correctly. Bill, if you're out there, love to hear from you. Send me a message. Uh, your piece of work was very influential to us, and that probably kept us on the natural um, bandwagon for many more years because uh, we just saw results. We, we didn't do a ton of sets. We didn't do a ton of exercises. We understood we're natural. We can't train all day. This isn't good for the body. And the few times that we were stupid enough to train all day, we got sick. We didn't feel good after. Uh, so we employed that, you know, it was like, a, and not high reps either. It was like, you know, lower, lower reps. I'm going to say four to eight. And then sometimes with some drop sets where you try and squeeze out a few more reps, you know, also in there we have to, you know, throw something at, uh, we have to give credit to Tom Platts and Leo Costa Jr. With their intensity, forced reps, uh, they kind of had a similar style so much too. They kind of had a similar style too. So we incorporate a lot of those strategies and we got results from them. Uh, so the heavy duty method, the um, Bill Davis brutally, brutally huge method. Bill, Bill needs, Bill should get some credit here. I don't think Bill ever got the credit that he should have gotten. You guys, my age, you probably remember his ads back in the, he was, he was, you know, he wasn't super lean, but he was a big dude. There's a picture of him with the sunglasses doing a most muscular. He was pretty strong. I think he had a natural, I'm going to say 405 bench. Maybe I think he could squat 600, but it was impressive. 20 some inch arms at the time. We, we, we watched the VHS and we had the booklets. So again, he was kind of incorporating the heavy duty, but with drop sets and then the Tom Platts, Leo Costa stuff. There's a lot of force reps. But we knew enough to just get the job done and get out. So what the training we kind of did before you heard about this basically was very similar to what's called maximum overload training or max OT training. So again, I don't like getting into the naughty or not shit guys, but some of the guys that 
are rumored to have been true natties, or somewhat true natties, who competed naturally and did well. Skip LaCour, Jeff Ouellette, uh, all those guys uh, who employed that, where it's like you warm up, you only do two or three exercises per body part, four to six reps when you can complete the sixth rep with perfect form, you increase by five pounds and you keep moving up that way. We train like that a lot too because you're getting into the gym, you're doing forced overload, progressive overload, and you're getting the fuck out. So, uh, but again, you'll see those guys who were true naughty. I'm not saying if they were or not, you know, uh, but, um, you know, a lot of those naughty guys, they would kind of retire from competition around 33 because their body just, you're on the downside, man. You can choose to get on the wagon or you can just say, hey, like my body, I, I'm not, I don't have the hormonal output that I did anymore, like when I was in my late teens and in my 20s. Early 30s, that's it. Bye-bye. We're on the downside now. So uh, so those are my thoughts on heavy duty. I think it's I think it's good. I think it can work for certain people. Uh, Dory Nates kind of refined it to make it really work for him. But from the natural perspective, um, I liked it a lot, actually. I, 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 I like that whole concept of get in the gym, get her done, and get the hell out and recover. Uh, you know, when I see a lot of natural guys now, they're in there all the time on their phones, doing tons of sets. They don't really change a lot from year to year. They're not much stronger. And you just say, well, that's their fucking problem, not mine. So to answer your question, heavy duty. Yes, tied in with my history of education. Heavy duty, the Ellington Darden book on Arthur Jones, his heavy duty concepts. Mike Menser, of course. Then tied into a brutally huge system with Bill Davis. you got to give Bill Davis some credit because I know he's influenced a number of people out there who are around my age and he's just never gotten the credit he should have. And also uh, a little bit towards too with Tom Platts and Leo Costa. Watch those guys, the videos of them training, and you'll realize how much we're all pussies when we train compared to those guys. Tom Platts, I don't think there's anybody could train like that motherfucker. That guy was insane. And it was so inspirational to watch him train. It was just amazing because <laughs> you always felt like a piece of shit. And you always felt like, hey, man, I got to step it up a notch because uh, Tom Platts would laugh at me if he watched me train here. Those are my thoughts on heavy duty. What do you guys think? Comment below. Again, guys, uh, if you want to check out my Instagram at Middle Aged Mind and Muscle. I'm on TikTok. And, uh, you know, I know we're in a different world, different time now with YouTube. I've done some videos on that. But for the people that seem to get some value out of this channel, I really appreciate when you click subscribe. It really means a lot. Again, comment below, and I will do my best to answer your questions. Remember, this is my therapy.